Hello friends, Matt here, and today I have a kind of interesting proposition. I don't know if you're familiar with Rare Disc. They are one of the top retailers from our neighbors to the north, Canada. Insert O Canada here. And they have what I would consider the first self-aware mystery box on the market. It's called the Reject Box, and I undid the tape, but haven't looked into this guy yet. It is four discs, and the U.S. retail price is $46, so a very good price. And they basically just said, yeah, these have been hard to move. They're either rough colors, uh, super overstable, super flippy, ones that are good discs that they just can't sell for whatever reason. And <laughs> for what, you know, they might not look great, they might... Some might not fly great, who knows? So I recently got this box. I've been in contact with the owner over Twitter and um, apparently one of these, he said is the worst disc in the shop. So we're also gonna check out and try to figure out which one is the worst one on top of just seeing what all this entails. So I've never ordered from them before. I'm on the southeastern part of the United States and they are in the far western part of Canada. So shipping is a little dicey, but I think for a lot of people it could be a good option because they do have really nice international shipping. Let's pop this guy open. The West Side Disc, Nico Adder? I bagged this. This isn't a crap disc. What are you playing at, Robert? And next we have the Juliana Corver Contiki. Now I can see why this one might be in here because this is a really, really understable putter. It's really cool looking. It's got Juliana there among the, uh, the the tiki heads from Easter Island. But it's a really domey premium plastic putter that's really flippy. Uh, I, I kind of get that one. I will say, their packaging is fantastic. They have paper in between every layer, so that's very cool. I have an MVP disc. And I get this one is green cosmic, so that makes sense. What do we have? Feels like a bolt. Tesla. Okay, a little bit faster bolt. That's it's a great disc, but yeah, ugly. Well, that's not fair. Not ugly, but it's a blank and it's in green, the color of grass and weeds. So I get that. Really cool disc though. And what are you? We got an infinite disc. Big Z Comet. So kind of funky stamp. It's got a bunch of people throwing on a comet with planets all around. Comets are not a favorite disc of mine, but they are kind of popular and it's white, so maybe it's just a slow mover. People didn't like the stamp. Maybe it's just got to be it. It is a dookie brown with red flakes, so bloody dookie color. Stegosaurus from the dino line from Infinite Disc. 121 gram putter. Ew. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's rough. That's rough. It, it, the failure here is this is a disc marketed towards kids. And if it were looking like that, probably not a whole lot of kids will be gravitating toward it with a particular color scheme. But okay, Robert. Let's check these out. I'll take them to the course and we'll see what we can do. Okay guys, so I'm out at beautiful Chocoloco Park in Oxford, Alabama. Of course, I've never played before with four discs that I have not thrown. Thrown a couple of the mold, but not those exact discs. It is a very windy day and I can't think of a better test to see if these reject discs are actually rejects or not than pushing them out in these very windy conditions. Let's see if I can get those flags in the background. See them back there? They are whipping. So, windy day, new disc, new park. Let's see if there really should be rejects or if you're getting the heck of a deal. Hole one out here is about 280 feet. Throwing the adder kind of soft out around those trees on the left hand side, skipping up and it might have hit the bottom of the cage there because I'm right underneath the basket just past it. And I'll just pick up the adder itself to finish the tap in because it did such a good job getting there. Hole two is, I, I think it's about 350, hanging the Comet out on the wide backhand. And it doesn't quite fight back as much as I thought it would, but it is pin high here. 
And if it wasn't for this little tree right here, I'd have a, a good 40 foot run. Just didn't quite flex it enough to get in there, tap in for easy three. Hole three here, trying the Contiki on a little bit of a flip up line, hits that branch and another branch and end up in circle two and just missed that one by a little bit, but tap in for another three. Hole four, you throw it out over the road and there's road OB long. The Tesla actually kicks OB, but hits uh, one of the uh, supports for the lighting rigs over here and bounces back in bounds. Probably should have been OB, but gets back in, get up and down for easy three after a not great drive. Pump the adder out on this one. This is about 350 feet. I didn't get it quite wide enough to do what I wanted, but I still ended up at the edge of the circle on the right side underneath the, uh, the Santa playing baseball lighting. The <laughs> you can kind of see there. Missed the putt, but once again, another easy three. This one's a little bit short for the adder, so I had to take a little bit off, but you're throwing around that lighting rig, and um, it's a little bit of a tricky shot. I think it's only about 300, or not 300, 260 feet, and I made that putt, so got another birdie in there. Trying the test lot on this one, you kind of got to weave through the different lighting arrangements out there, and it does great. It's almost a 500-foot shot. And it gets up here inside circle two, so it was probably about 440 feet for what that disc. I'm pretty impressed, really. Trying out the Comet on this little Heiser Flex shot, I think it's about 240. And I think it might have hit the pole, because it's right here behind the basket. Good shot, another easy two. Trying out the Contiki on this one, uh, since I haven't thrown it off the tee but one time. And probably should have gone for the Comet for this over the tree shot, but uh, it performed the line well. It just wasn't quite long enough. The hole's about 270, and it only went about 230 on that big hyzer line. Okay, so through nine holes, I gotta say, I have enjoyed throwing all these discs to some degree. Start out with the Contiki. So for our super domey putt and approach disc, I didn't like putting with it, but I don't mind approaching with it and even throwing it off the tee for short shots. It's really easy to pop it on a hyzer. It flips up and rides and performs pretty well. It's just so domey that I couldn't get a great grip putting on it. And it is, it's pretty shallow. So even like I like a shallow putter and that's even a little bit excessive for me. So does it deserve to be a reject? Probably not. For the right player, that's a good disc. Just for your majority of like MA1, MA2 guys out there. That's not the type of disc they're going to gravitate towards, and I think that's a lot of people out there buying discs. Move on to the Comet. I thought I didn't like Comets. For ye I've had Comets. I always thought the rim was so chunky and uncomfortable that I couldn't throw them well. This thing was glorious. I mean, did you see that shot on, I think it was hole eight? I about aced that one. Hole two. Hole two is 360 feet, and that got me pinned high on a backhand. Like, that's pretty impressive. It, it's very much a point and shoot, slightly understable mid range, but put it on a little bit of hyzer, and it was going exactly where I wanted it to. And then the Tesla, the Tesla, when I threw it backhand, I, I was, thought, wow, that's really overstable. And it did get it, catch a little bit of road rash because I had to do that skip shot, and MVP rims will get road rash. Um, but when I threw it on that forehand, holy cow, that went far. I don't know if you could see it, but that, I mean, <laughs> MVP rim, Simon will tell you, as he says on his channel, the black rims make them hard to film. And that was a long shot. That is a 495 foot par four. I was in circle two with a 10 speed. Like Tesla's nine 10 speed disc. Like that's not a super fast disc to go over 400 feet. So that was impressive. Um, I do see why this one was not a favorite due to the color, but holy cow, I thought that was a great flight. And then the adder, almost ace hole one with it. Got myself in, in the circle with it several times. I bagged this disc, I love this disc. This one will probably make my tournament bag at some point. I usually bag a pink one that's more or less identical, just a little bit worn in. So give one of these things a shot. You know, you're probably gonna get one or two that's not something you're gonna absolutely love, but if you're a newer player and can, you know, stomach one disc that's probably gonna be a funky green or you need some 
variety in your bag. I think it, it's a really great deal. And thanks to Rare Disc for uh, sending me one. Really fun. Thank you guys. Thanks for watching. And uh, we'll see you in the next one.